and welcome to another episode of the Full Force News Burst brought to you by GeneralsJoes.com with me as your host, Chris Bursting All Over the Place McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. Joining me to discuss his new Kickstarter project, the MARV or Modular Armoured Range Vehicle, is Full, for full Force, this is easy for me to say, Full Force First Timer, Greg Bridgman. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this news burst. Just yesterday, the highly anticipated Kickstarter project the MARV or Modular Armoured Range Vehicle from Wayward Goat Collectibles was launched and is currently sitting at $18,338. I have managed to get the man behind this fantastic project on the show tonight, Greg Bridgman. Thanks for jumping on with me to discuss this, Marv. Greg, first off, could you give us a bit of background about yourself and how you ended up working on this particular project, please? So, I'm Greg. Hi, Greg. I'm the mastermind <laughs> behind the Marv. Nice. Kind of, I'm kind of the mastermind. Um, You're the Marvster mind. I, I am not really a toy designer per se. I am a toy seller. I right. am a dirty scalper. I am... <laughs> You know, you might have seen me at Joe Con or another show selling you overpriced figures. <laughs> oh, that's who you are. That's that's me. That's <laughs> that's what I was doing. I've been doing that for about five or six years now. Nice. And I wanted to find a way to scale my business and kind of move away from the uh, ups and downs of buying someone's collection. Yeah. Or Hasbro wholesale or just you know, things that are not quite as reliable. So sure. I wanted to start getting into developing my own products. So that's how the Marv came about. There was a severe absence of vehicles in the market. Yeah. So that's where I started to take a look. How does it feel to finally launch this Kickstarter? I mean, how long have you been working on it for a start? I've been working on this for about a year and a half. I think that's when we first started with some concept drawings for what I wanted to do. Nice. And and how much has that developed over time? In terms of... From that, for that initial concept to what we're seeing now, I mean, how is that like... You know how how much different is it from that from that first moment to what we kind of seeing on the on this Kickstarter project? It's pretty close. I'd say the difference is that it's better. <laughs> Everyone, the the people who have touched it have made it better than what I imagined. Awesome. Who else is involved in the? Can you talk about who else is involved in it? So I got to give a shout out to my buddy Will, who did the initial concept drawings awesome. way back in November 2017. He's a friend of my brother's, a friend of mine, and he was happy to just draw some ideas that I had and I have pages and pages of initial drawings of the Marv. That's so, so cool. For variants. So that's, that was a fun way to kind of keep it in the family. Yeah. Uh, but the actual nitty gritty design work, uh, that was Rod at the big guy studio. Oh, cool. He's been doing all the design work and, uh, he will be facilitating the manufacturing if we get to that point. Yeah. When we get to that point. So obviously you, you, you had the idea to do this particular kind of vehicle. Um, was it based on, is it, I take, is it based on a current military vehicle, an active one? It's based on a few different vehicles. We have, or there's a type of vehicle called an MRAP, yeah. which is sort of like an armored truck. It's meant to protect the guys from like mine blasts and explosives. Yeah. Um, and that's what a lot of armed forces are using today in law enforcement too, because they get surplus for military. So they're, they're riding around in these things too. <laughs> That must be fun. <laughs> uh, Through the streets. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a little excessive when you when you think about it, but you know, I digress. Yeah. Wayward Goat is anti-police. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but these these are pretty cool designs. It's a big departure from the, the classic Humvee, which yeah. is cool. It's iconic, but at this point, it's like relegated to National Guard use or, or yeah. patrolling the base. They're not taking it out on field missions. Sure. And they it was just, they just it get was, blown away now. Yeah. And it was pretty, pretty big in the hip hop community circa early 2000s as well. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of, it kind of lost its military edge a little bit. <laughs> It became a luxury vehicle. I must admit, this the Marv itself, like it does have, it does hark back, or it does look similar to a couple of those kind of current military vehicles. But it definitely has its own feeling, its own vibe. It, it looks brilliant. I'll jump in with where where we took the biggest inspiration. It's from the the US MATV oh, vehicle, right. but that vehicle, it, it's cool looking to be sure. But it has a lot of curves. It's a lot bigger in in terms of scale to a person yeah. than 
from Arvis to a figure. Is that the one with the angled kind of shields on the bottom of it that kind of kind of angle down, or am I thinking of something yeah, else? No, no, that's exactly the, the type of vehicle that we're, we're going for, but yeah. that's a great example of where the Marv diverged from yeah. the real world. A toy doesn't need a V-shaped hull to deflect an explosive blast. Sure, sure. Unless you're Chris McLeod uh, <laughs> exploding things in the kitchen. <laughs> For an intro, <laughs> uh, hopefully my Marv won't be so damaged when I'm <laughs> bursting all over the place. In fact, um, Guillermo Olivo, who was on our show not too long ago, he's doing a plastic crack documentary. He messaged me the other day to say he gets really cool updates when a full force pod- podcast is posted on his on his watch, and like the logo comes up, and he said that when he's when he's driving, there are so many explosions in the. <laughs> things that he's like he's like like he doesn't know where to look like he's like is this on the show am i being attacked I, yeah I drive to a disaster <laughs> shout out to uh guillermo there i mean t- take could you take us through the features on the marv then please yeah sure rolling wheels i'll start with Sweet. the rolling wheels because that's been a big hit in my video uh <laughs> People love that. You got opening doors. Yeah. I don't know if this is technically a feature, but we've got window pieces in the vehicle. That's a feature. So, like, you know, that's some of that premium detailing. Soft rubber tires. Nice. There's something so satisfying about getting a soft rubber tire on an action fit on an, a vehicle. It's uh, definitely adding to the premium feel of it, which is something that's been missing. Yeah, I agree. I mean, nothing totally against like a hollow plastic tire. I get cost cutting, but come on, rubber tires are way cooler. Agreed. Um, we've got a removable rear cover so you can access the bed of the the truck. Nice. Put your favorite accessories in there. We've got a cab that fits four figures seated. Awesome. And you don't have to take their gear off to get them in. Oh, that's cool. So there's a lot of space in there. Oh, plenty of space. You can fit a Joe wearing a helmet and the vest and whatever else he's got going on. <laughs> I was going to say, like, Stalker's kayak on his back. Yeah, you could probably <laughs> fit the kayak in there. I haven't tried, but you might be able to. You're going to get... Not- you're gonna get people doing that now. Get gonna try I mean, and stuff gonna it in there. Hands for refunds because it doesn't fit the kayak. <laughs> We've got the rotating turret. Nice, nice. Guy can fit in that. Stand at the gun, hold the gun, whatever. Um, and then we've got our modular system for the Marv. All of the pieces, or most of the pieces, are removable wow. and interchangeable. We wow. use a series of mounting points so you can move around the pieces, put them in different spots. Like you could take the gun mount, you could put it on the rear rail, rear railing. Yeah. Move the lights around. You can move the antennas around, and that just adds some customization to it. That's awesome. That's I mean that's massive, isn't it? And I suppose in this day and age with like you know Marauder Task Force and Boss Fight Studio and all those kind of action figures that are on the market, like the the high end GI Joe stuff when you know Pursuit of Cobra to Retaliation and all that kind of stuff, and a little bit of Fiftieth, but not too much. But you know what I mean, like that to, to have that ability for that vehicle to do all of those things matches those kind of levels of quality which is brilliant absolutely absolutely it's it's a way for the the end user to make it their own that's um that's awesome so you can you can kind of make a lot of different looks out of this vehicle can't you you can and because of the parts being able to be removed you can get new parts that will convert it to something totally different that's awesome. We have two add-on part kits in various stages of development. Yeah. Uh, the first one is the Zombie Hunter. Oh, I was going to ask about this. This is it's like the, the ultimate, like, I don't know, like Dreadnought vehicle almost now. Yeah, that. That's not quite the Dreadnought one. The Dreadnought one is the, uh, I forget what the last name I gave it was, but the Apocalypse like Warrior. Oh, okay, yeah, like the kind that's, of Mad Max version. That's the yeah. Mad Max looking Dreadnought one. Yeah. The zombie one, we've got it planned, kind of like a rear gunner station, bars over the windows, kind of like a, a diamond plate steel cool. armor to cover on the doors and, and whatnot. I'm going off memory here. I should have the render spinning, but I'm a bad... You're, uh, a, you're a bad you, man. Not at all. I'm very so, bad man. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it, because again, I'll be I'll be putting this up here as well yeah. on the video, so if they can't, if they don't hear about it, they're going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they'll be they'll be looking at it and then hearing my words saying like, "Oh yeah, the zombie kit comes with uh, bananas <laughs> and, uh, and, a, and a rainbow rain that turns the, uh, into a treasure chest, and the Goonies are inside it." No, I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we've got some cool gear with it. We got a couple of backpacks, some tools, and those will fit with the three point seven five inch four inch figures. Brilliant. So brilliant, kind of getting into the figure realm a little bit too. But that's 
that's a ways off. Those uh, the timetables for development did not quite line up with the Kickstarter on those. Sure. The current plan is to get them out directly to consumers after the initial Marvs get produced. Okay. Uh, do, do you have an idea of price point for those kits? Um, not at the moment. No worries. I just like to you know put put people on the spot with these. Yeah, no. Uh... <laughs> I'll put an explosion in there as well. Um. <laughs> Um, what are the what are the different pledge levels, Bud, and 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 also well, we'll talk about pledge levels first, and then move on to stretch goals. But take us through the pledge levels. If yeah, you will. sure. So uh, right now, our pledge levels are uh, two dollars. It's along for the ride. You get a big thank you. Uh, you <laughs> Thanks. Get all the updates, That's but cute. no no tangible rewards for that sure, one. Sure. At eight dollars, you get the Marv concept art poster, which mm. is kind of another cool thing we did. Yeah. That was done by the legendary Guy Cassidy. Oh wow! Okay. I'm down. Designer of a uh, Rolling Thunder he's toy line. Am I allowed? Am I allowed to say the name? Yes. You're gonna shut down. <laughs> no, you can say you can say anything about Guy Cassidy. He's amazing, and he uh, GI designer, yep. legend, awesome Dude, guy. Rolling Thunder, X30 Conquest, Desert Fox. Yes. He did yes. some of my favorite vehicles of all time. The dude is amazing. So the fact that yes. he's involved yes, in this as well, like a carrying oh. chopper, amazing. That's a deep cut right there. Deep cut. No, it, it was cool. Anyway, um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, he did an awesome original piece, uh, had that commissioned. Now it's on a poster. It's a cool little throwback. Um, that's the $8 level. Yeah. Then at $90 is Marv. Brilliant. That is one desert tan Marv. You get all the, the accessories with that, all the neat little greeblies and whatnot. Yeah. And that'll come in a nice uh, boxed packaging. Closed Which looks gorgeous, packaging. by the way. I really like that's that just, touch. That's just an early concept, but the final will look as cool, if not cooler. Awesome. Um, some assembly required, but it's just like snap-on accessories. So cool. So the main body will come assembled. Yeah. At 175, we have the Double Trouble, which is two Desert Marvs and one poster. Brilliant. And at 425, we have the Marv Motor Pool, wow. which is five Marvs wow. and a poster. Wow. And at that level, you can pick from any color that we're doing as a stretch goal. If we if we unlock the stretch goal, you can choose that color. You can choose five of it, four of it, whatever. Sure. That's awesome. I take it you're going to have one of those um, a backer kit kind of questionnaire setups at the end, right? Yes, absolutely. We'll, we will be doing a post-Kickstarter survey and uh, making sure everyone has the chance to pick where they want their funds allocated. Amazing. That's so cool. Are there any more, are there any more uh, pledge levels? Um, not at the moment. Okay. But we should have four new pledge levels tomorrow. Wow. And possibly a couple of different levels, maybe at the end of the week, next oh, week. Sweet. So you, are we talking some bigger pledge levels? Or are we talking like sprinkled in between like the list of, of stuff you've just mentioned? Smaller, actually. Okay. Smaller. The feedback I've received so far is, is just kind of, you know, getting something in there below the $90 point. Okay. So that's that's what I'm working on tonight. It'll be Marv, yeah. but just kind of some different offering versions of the Marv, some different ways to get it to backers. That's awesome. Okay, cool, man. I was going to say um, a bigger pledge level to be have like nine motor pulls, um, <laughs> uh, like a 450 billion dollar buy-in type situation but my math isn't very good so it's probably that not. would be fun but i think shipping would get a little difficult you imagine to you'd like send someone a cargo container of mars you'd have to get the military to deliver it <laughs> have to get one of the actual lem wraps <laughs> to store everything <laughs> That's so cool, man. And and you mentioned the stretch goals. Could you take us through those ones at the moment? Because I'm guessing the, this, if uh, if all goes to plan, I'm guessing the stretch goals could be increased. They could be, and some may be restructured. I'm looking into doing that now, just to kind of get a maybe a little more into the initial goal than I originally planned. So yeah. I'm gonna work on that and see what we can do. Brilliant. But our first one, our base funding goal is 125,000. And we are, I think, around 15% of the way there in just 24 hours. That's insane. So that's really, really good. big thank you to the backers. First stretch goal comes in at $155,000. And that's our stealth black Marv. Nice. So cool, black, Batmobile looking, whatever. Snake Eyes Marv. Yep, got it. Yeah, Snake Eyes Ninja Marv. <laughs> The combat cruiser, Marv, right? Don't you dare mention that. No, no. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that was one of the the inspirations for this i i love the combat cruiser who doesn't uh, i i use it as a custom for a dino hunters one but yeah yeah but it's it just kind of fell short of its potential it had like mounting mm. points they never really did anything with them no windows no windows the yeah. doors just kind of fell off it's a, it like, as much as i do i do love the look of it the 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 quality of the feel of it, it's very lightweight very loose yeah but still so was, it's still a beauty but yeah carry on let's focus it, on the that, Marv. Was, that was an inspiration where like you know how do we make something better yeah so that's the mark at one hundred and eighty-five thousand. back to the stretch goals yeah we have the uh the drab green marv so kind of like your olive green og og 13 classic army looking <laughs> you know very generic very plain very perfect perfect and then our last stretch goal at the uh two hundred and fifteen thousand dollar mark yeah and that's enforcement blue Ooh, bit police police element there do you think swat team <sighs> enemy forces oh yeah of course i forgot about i forgot about the obvious blue team that you want to use it for (laughs) that's awesome man that's really really cool something i haven't i'm not sure if i i I didn't notice this i might have seen it and then it's gone into my subconscious decals are we are we are you kind of including any of those kind of elements into into these other than the zombie kit and the the um the other kit are you uh, offering any kind of decals sheets and things like that not yet that's something i've gotten a lot of feedback on oh, cool. i'm going to start to look into that that's a nice like kind of smaller dollar item yeah that can be added yeah but it's just kind of finding the right party to do it and make sure it gets done accurately to, sure. to what we need but the marv does have some have some uh, paint applications for it oh cool so it won't be totally unpainted uh we have lights painted on the sides and then the dashboards have paint applications as well but also i suppose with it being modular and customizable that just adds another element of customizability to it doesn't it so to allow like you know a paint you know some paint work on there for someone else if they want to create something of their own absolutely and then you can mix and match parts from other colors mm. as they're released kind of like when you see one of those crap cars down the street that's got like a different door color to the uh, yeah. rest <laughs> you, get a, you get a new door from the junkyard and you're good to go <laughs> that's awesome Don't let that stop you. have you thought about any kind of camo style decos is that something that we could possibly see in a in a stretch goal scenario mm, stretch goal probably not so I'll admit I'm playing the the Kickstarter pretty conservatively. Yeah, just trying to focus on getting a high quality item of co- out. Of course, yeah, yeah. To market, I'm just getting excited. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm excited too. That that was <laughs> it, it. was difficult to kind of just like take a step back. It's like, yeah. all right, we've got an awesome prototype here. We've got awesome designs done. Let's not go overboard <laughs> with the offerings. Sixty-seven stretch goals. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep going before before you know we're at a hundred different Marvs. I'm expecting a Red Shadows Marv. I'm sorry. I'm if I don't get that or a Z Force Marv, then I'm I'm out. I, I don't think I'm allowed to say Red Shadows Mark. I oh, you I'll probably get... aren't, but you could just do a red one and that'd be fine. <laughs> There's I have a file with a lot of different color <laughs> renders. I'm gonna stop poking because there uh... are three or four shades of red. Sweet that's that's all i'm gonna say sweet okay that's, uh exclusive on the full force is happening guys <laughs> that's absolutely confirmed <laughs> oh that's <laughs> a brilliant. photoshop render exists of red uh, as you were saying though i mean you are excited about this was it hard to like rein in that excitement yes and no it was, it was kind of easy to kind of after taking a look at other Kickstarters and looking at the hurdles various projects have faced, yeah, there seemed to be a correlation. This is not to, to bash any of them either, because a lot of the products are very complex compared yes. to a vehicle. Yeah, There seemed to be a correlation between the quantity of rewards and the timeliness of delivery. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I kind of wanted to streamline what we're offering to focus on getting out of good quality product in a reasonable time frame it makes an absolute huge amount of sense that totally and that's that's actually part of why i didn't push on the add-on kits to get those done quicker yeah so we had less to focus on for the manufacturing process Uh, i mean have you kind of been seeking out a lot of um, advice from people that have run kickstarters already yeah here and there kind of gleaning what i can from the community kickstarter creators and then friends who are just either collectors themselves or also in the the business so it's all been helpful 
Yeah. So let's talk about the Kickstarter process yeah, itself. Sure. That is I mean, I, something you've probably picked up, and it's it's a very fluid process. I think everyone yes. we've, we've ever spoken to, like the Boss Fight guys, who have done mul- a couple of Kickstarters now, uh, a number of other guys that have, have, have attempted or, and are different kinds of success with those, they've all kind of mentioned how they've had to change things as they're going. So you get you get all that planning and you get all that, that sorted and you get it all out there and then you go, okay, we have to change this. This is an issue that I didn't think of. This is something that came up. Yes. Have, I'm going to say this is probably something you'll see. Is it something you've seen already in the, the process? That's something I'm, I'm working to fix right now. Just some <laughs> feedback I've gotten where it's just like, oh, it starts at 90? Yeah. Ooh, yeah, may- maybe I should you know add something a little lower cost i mean it makes sense though because obviously you're not just talking about an i you're not buying an item here it's not like you're just going to the store and you're going i'm having this thank you please i'm off like you are yeah. actually paying or you're putting in for its manufacture it's like you know not necessarily its design because that's already been done but uh, i suppose right. that's that's a pre cost that has to still be considered in yes. the, what you're doing, you know, that you can't just do that for free. So all of these things considered, considered. yeah, it makes sense. Like, I mean, I, I, it doesn't seem that expensive to me personally. That seems like a, a, you know, a very acceptable price for what this is. Right. Well, thank you. I guess uh, <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to keep it reasonable. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, the reality of manufacturing is that it is very expensive. Oh. Up- to get it going the Absolutely. the tooling cost the getting the molds done it's a pretty steep upfront cost it's astronomical you can see why crowdfunding has been such a valuable tool yeah in getting these small lines off the ground and in some cases even if they're hugely successful they don't cover the tooling costs so that's even that's something else that is is quite eye-opening when when talking to people about these kickstarter projects uh, again like we're, we're early in this one and i would love to have you back on at some point during the process like about halfway through and then possibly towards the yeah. end just to kind of talk through how things are going and, and all that kind of stuff if that's okay with you greg yeah, absolutely I, I would love to um and the last question i, I wanted to ask you was if the kickstarter is successful which at the moment is doing really well and you know, if you're going to make changes too, then I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be an even bigger uptick at some point as well. Fingers crossed. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. Absolutely. Touching wood everywhere. That sounded a bit dodgy. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm okay with it. Good. Do you have <laughs> Do you have any plans following the project? You know, are you thinking that far ahead or are you literally at this moment just, we've got to just focus on what we're attempting here? Or, or do you have some plans following it that you would like to maybe try and utilize if this is successful? Uh, immediately following the project, I think I will uh, get in my car, drive down to uh, our local fast food joint cookout, <laughs> uh, get an healthy meal, <laughs> and nice. then uh, come home, kind of just sit for an hour, <laughs> and then probably fall asleep. <laughs> It'll be the first time in a while, right? Yeah. Get right back to grinding on this. Uh, the the timing of my project was to kind of coincide with Chinese New Year going yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, where no manufacturing is getting done. <laughs> so hopefully, we're assuming this all funds and goes well, and and there's a bit of a delay process with like fund collection and then the Kickstarter surveys and whatnot. Yeah. The the plan is to just roll right into manufacturing once the Kickstarter ends. And we all know plans are perfect and they always go really smoothly, don't we? Plans work out perfectly. <laughs> So I'm anticipating, you know, uh, at least a headache or two, a hurdle to overcome, but hopefully just rolling right into more work on the Marv. Yeah. So. Awesome, man. Well, we wish you all the luck with that. Um, oh. And like I said, we'll we'll try and we'll want to get you on again kind of, you know, during the, the actual process. And then once it's, you know, got to the end, we'd like to have you back on again, uh, win, lose or draw. But at the moment, it's, oh, looking, yeah. it's looking really, really good. Thank you. I'm very happy with the response and huge thanks to the backers and the people sharing it, spreading the word. That's a huge help for keeping the momentum going. Absolutely. So. so remember to go to the Kickstarter page right now, guys. Pledge anything you can to help get this fully funded and then some, please. Greg, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Chris. On, on the news, no, not a problem. It's been an absolute pleasure. That's it for this installment of the Full Force News Burst. Thank you to my wonderful guest, Greg Bridgman. See you next time. And as always, full Marv. I mean, Force. No, we'll say Marv. Full Marv. <laughs>
Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. And as always, you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com slash The Full Force. And if you would like to contact the show, you can message us on either of these platforms with feedback, questions or to say, who do you think you are? A serious operation now? No, not even close. Look out for more of these news bursts that we are posting on the Facebook page from now on. Full Force.